high quality CI pipeline boosts your code quality, reduces code review strain, and solidifies best practices across your team and organization. I'll show you how to set up a sleek, modern CI pipeline for Python with the latest tools. Linting, formatting, type consistency, and more. Let's go. Here is a completely empty project that we will be building out. First, let's create an empty project with UV in it. We will use the package flag to set up a build backend that we will need later. And an empty log file with UV log. This log file makes sure that everyone installs the same dependencies and transitive dependencies with the exact same versions everywhere. If you modify the TOML file directly, which is certainly not advised, the log file is out of sync because it is not updated. We can verify if the log file is in sync with the TOML using the UV log command and adding the locked flag. Let's clean up the TOML file again so the log file is in sync. This is the first check that we will add to our CI pipeline. Let's create a GitHub action file at .github slash workflows slash code quality. Now, since I want my code checks to run in parallel, I'm going to abstract away the installation of UV to a composite action. This allows me to refer to the action as part of the steps within a job. Nice. Secondly, we can add a linter to make sure that everyone uses the same code quality standards. Linters can check if your code has doc strings, type hints, doesn't contain any secret values, it can check cyclomatic complexity and much, much more. There are quite a few linters, but the most complete and fastest is rough. To check if the project is up to par, we can run UVX rough check. This will report all lines that violate the rule. And we can add it to CI. We can also set a dependency on the completion of the log file check. Complementary to linting, we have formatting. This checks how your code is visually structured, such as sorting of imports, double quotes or single quotes, line length, backslashes or parentheses, etc. With UVX rough format, we can completely reformat our code to be fully PEP compliant. As of recording this video, Format does not take into account import formatting. However, the fix flag of the rough check command can help us there. Rough makes sure that all the imports are sorted correctly. If we want to check if all files are formatted correctly, we can run uvx rough format with a check flag. So that is the next step that we will add to our CI pipeline. Next up is type checking. Since Python is a dynamic language and type hints are, well, hints, it is entirely possible to write good type hints for a function, but still ignore them. For example, I can write a function that hints at a certain return type, but instead returns something completely else. My linter complains, which is very good, but it will compile fine. Ruff, unfortunately, does not catch these. So we need to have something else. To make sure that the types are what you document them to be, we can use PyWrite. To get PyWrite up and running, we can add that as dev dependency to our UV project. And now we can run UV run PyWrite. And we see that PyWrite indeed complains that something is going on with our return type. Let's fix this so our CI doesn't complain. And of course, add this to our code quality pipeline. So far, we've only checked the validity and the structure of syntax. Next up is actual implementation. Unit tests are the first and easiest way to check the validity of your implementation. Let's add a simple test case for the function that we've just created. To run our unit test, we can add pytest to our dev dependencies. And to run our unit test, we can do uv run pytest with the test folder. And I like to add the verbose flag to have a bit more structured output. Additionally, to just running unit tests, we can also track the code coverage. For this, we can add pytest cov to our dev dependencies. And rerun our test command with the cov flag. It is also possible to generate an XML file 
from your coverage report. This XML file we will need later to upload it to codecov.io. First, let's add this to our CI pipeline. As a bonus, it is also optional to add a durations flag, which prints out the timing for each test. Lastly, it is nice to check if our project can actually be built into a wheel. As we speak, the latest version of UV sets up a build backend if you use the package flag, which is what we did. That means we can just run UV build, which creates a wheel file for us in the disk folder. And let's add that one to CI as well. The CI pipeline is nearly complete. I just want to show you how to set up the uploading of the code coverage file to codecov.io. If you navigate to app.codecov.io, you can log in with your GitHub account. After you've logged in and selected your GitHub project, you can go to configuration, general, and here's the repository token that we can use to link GitHub to CodeCov. So copy this token, go to your GitHub repository, navigate to settings, secrets and variables, actions, and then you can add your token as environment secret here. After you've done that, the only thing that is left to do is add a small step in our CI pipeline that uploads the code coverage report to codecov.io. And with this, our CI is completed. If you then navigate back to your GitHub repository, navigate to actions, and one of the commits, you can see a CI pipeline that does exactly what we've told the YAML to do. And that's it. With this CI pipeline, you've set up a reliable process to make sure that your code is clean, consistent, and tested at every step. By automating these checks, you're freeing up time for deeper code reviews. With tools like Rough, PyWrite, and PyTest, you're well on your way to set up a seamless CI pipeline. Thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe if you found this video helpful. If you have any more questions, let me know in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. Happy coding!